Christmas. I feel bad for the kids, you know. Mm -hmm. My neighbor kids are out there on their skateboards. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know, we need to get any exercise. Yeah. yeah, but it's, it, it got to be pretty bored. Yeah. You feel bad for the parents, too. Yes. Because <laughs> it's very confusing. For the person who's on the phone, if you could mute your phone when you're not talking, because all the background noise will be uh, picked up by the um, at the meeting. Thanks. Great, thank you.
I call this meeting of the Wapaka County Planning and Zoning Committee to order. This meeting and all other meetings of this committee are open to the public. Proper notice has been posted and given to the media in accordance with Wisconsin statute so that the citizenry may be aware of the time, place, and agenda of this meeting. Due to COVID-19, this meeting is conducted under Wapaka County Resolution Number 8, 2020-2021 and Governor Evers' mm -hmm. Emergency Order Number 1. This meeting can be accessed on YouTube at the, the site published. This meeting may inadvertently cause a quorum of other county committees or the county board of supervisors. No business decisions of any other committees or the board of supervisors will be conducted at this meeting. Participation in person is permitted. The meeting will be conducted using CDC and DHS guidance regarding social distancing. Tables and chairs will be arranged accordingly. Face coverings are required unless an exception applies. Uh, roll call sheet's gone around. So uh, we've got four present in person and, and uh, let's, one on, one on his way, one on his way, okay. Have you had a chance to review the agenda? Second it. Moved by Supervisor Cuspin, second by, seconded by Supervisor Muck to move and approve as printed. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried, thank you. So now we've got uh, two meeting minutes to approve here. You want to do them both at the same motion? Yeah. Okay. So if you had a chance to uh, review and approve the September 1st and September 22nd. Mr. Chairman, I, I did look at them and I'd make the motion. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second them. Moved by Supervisor Federwood, seconded by Supervisor Muck to approve the minutes from both the September 1st and September 22nd, 2020 meetings. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carried, thank you. At this time, we open the floor for public comment of, for people who, or items that are not on the agenda. Floor is open for public comment. Floor is open for public comment. Third time, last call for public comment. Seeing none, we'll start with our first hearing. Okay, the Planning and Zoning Committee meeting and public hearings to be considered today, Tuesday, October 6, 2020, are open to the public. Anyone present may speak provided they stand up and identify themselves and have filled out a notice of public appearance sheet, which is located in the box by the entrance door. Anyone attending via phone or Zoom meeting may speak, provided they identify themselves by name and address before doing so. We are recording these proceedings, so it is important that you state your name and address before addressing the committee. We request that you do not interfere with or interject comments while another person has the floor. The chair will permit adequate time for anyone wishing to speak and may compel the attendance of witnesses. Following hearings have been published as class two notices in accordance with chapter 985 of the Wisconsin statute and will be heard by this committee this morning. Number one is Tyler Floyd, number two, Alan J and Michelle M. Jagal Zinke, number three, Aaron Olson, and number four, Dustin Noshes. The County Zoning Committee is a delegate, delegated unit of the County Board by ordinance to consider zoning ordinance amendments and decide conditional uses. The Zoning Committee is interested in hearing all pertinent evidence. Witnesses in favor of the application will be called first, those opposed second, and then others. After each witness has appeared, he or she may be questioned by the committee. Persons present who are not appearing as witnesses will be allowed to propose relevant questions to be put to the committee. However, the chair reserves the rule on relevancy and no member of the audience will be allowed to give testimony without being sworn. Because a record of this hearing is being tape recorded, it is impertinent that each witness or speaker identify themselves and their interest in the subject matter of the hearing before speaking. 
Please speak in the direction of the microphone on the presentation table. The time limit on the presentations may be imposed. I do not request, I do request that you avoid repetition and limit your remarks to the subject matter being considered. Neither the committee nor your neighbors will benefit from hearing statements that repeat opinions which have already been expressed or relate to matters other than the case before the committee. Personal attacks or abusive testimony or gross hearsay, rumor, or gossip will be ruled out of order by the chair subject to the immediate appeal of the majority of the committee. With that, we'll call the first public hearing to order. The purpose of this hearing is to take testimony regarding the application for Tyler Floyd, located in part of the northwest corner of the southwest corner of section six in the township of Madison, lying along County Road Double D and Court Road, fire number N11850, Wapaka County, Wisconsin. Parcel number 1406-6110 for a conditional use permit, major home occupation, marine engine repair in an agricultural and woodland transition district on approximately 10 acres. Will the secretary read the names of the persons that were notified of this year? I will. I notified Dwayne Federowitz, Chairman Tom Matson, Michael Melberg, Clerk, Town of Matson, Dan Benke, Supervisor, Town of Matson, Greg Hansen, Supervisor, Town of Matson, Tyler Floyd, Casey Byersdorf with the Wapak County Highway Department, uh, Kyle Zivon with the Army Corps of Engineers, Carmen Creek State Park, as well as Patrick Fenn, Erica M. and Tyler J. Floyd, Ronald L. and Lori J. Hepp. Richard R. and Nancy E. Immel, Robert W. Keller, Arlene and Roger Kratzky, Michael E. and Beth A. Petruzet, Michael J. and Deanna S. Holden, and Robert F. Schmidt. I hereby direct a copy of this affidavit to be filed as a part of the record of these proceedings. The committee has conducted an on site inspection of this property. We will now hear the application of Tyler Floyd. Will the applicant or their agent please come forward and be sworn in to testify? If they are present via telephone or Zoom, please identify yourself to be sworn in. Hello, may you please raise your right hand. You swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Uh, there's the microphone. So if you would uh, state your name and address and explain to us what uh, you, want, you want to tell about this. Sure. Uh, Tyler Floyd, uh, address is N11850 County Road DD. Um, applying for the permit to run a small business from home for uh, marine engine repair, boat repair. Um, using the two existing buildings that were currently on the property. Yeah. How long have you lived there? Um, about two and a half years. You plan on using the big shed and the small shed? Yeah. I see there was a lot of boats and stuff out there. Are you currently in the business? Or are you waiting to? Uh, well, I when I ran the, business, the same business before we moved up. Uh, so originally from South Milwaukee. Um, yes. Um, I, I'm working on boats, um, and unfortunately, I, I jumped the gun and <laughs> just started going at it. And I was informed that I needed a permit, so I was following through with, you know, the recommendation of getting the permit. And uh, so that's where we are now. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Uh, are you uh, going to be doing outdoor storage or anything um, like that? Uh, in, indoor, not necessarily outdoor, no. Okay. Yeah. Are you, you going to be like a, a dealer for any brand? Just curious. At, um, this, point. I, at this point, I don't plan on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, you know, uh, I don't, I've never done really much on the retail side as far as, you know, storefront or product or anything like that. Sure. It's, it's 
pretty much strictly service and repair. Okay. This would be a full time occupation. Uh, I would like to turn it into it. Yeah. Do you have any employees? No. You, you think you'll be having employees and have parking and um, facility? Hard to say. I have three boys, so I would hope that one day they would, you know, help me out, get them started. Sure. Um, but I, I don't foresee any employees in the near future. You just want to tell them there are bathroom facilities. Yes, there is a bathroom. In the side of the building. Yes. Which one? Uh, the big one. The big one. Mm -hmm. The one in the back here. So in this picture here, we can see the, the one that's kind of. Yeah, the, the green roof. Yep, the larger one. Yep. The smaller one is the white one. You can see kind of diagonally behind it. You said you did this in Milwaukee too before you moved up here? South Milwaukee, Burlington area. Okay. You worked on somebody else or uh, well, I work. I've been in the marine industry since college, so since 2000. Um, uh, but I worked. I, I started the business in 2013 in Burlington. I like the girls here from Burlington. It's a nice area. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's getting busy though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. West of the interstate is slowly getting more built up all the time. Yeah, it's filling yeah. up quick. Any other questions from the committee at this point? Well, thank you. If you want to just take a seat and stick around in case sure. we, we have any other questions, we're going to call for more testimony just to, okay. just to do it right here. Is there any further testimony in favor of this application? Any further testimony in favor of this application? Third time, is there any further testimony in favor of this application? Seeing none, is there any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Third time, is there any testimony in opposition to this application? Seeing none, are there any letters? There are, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, we have a submission from Michael Colvin. Uh, he's going to make concern. I'm writing in response to the notice of public hearings letter I received concerning the Tyler Floyd property in the town of Madison, Wilcox County. As a customer and a neighbor, I am fully in support of his acquiring a conditional use permit. Myself and many of my friends have used Mr. Floyd's business since it opened. He provides a service to the local community that would otherwise require us to travel at least an hour. As my neighbor, his business has had no impact on my family and I have no concerns with his using the property for his business. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at and then his personal phone number. Thank you. And we also have the town recommendation form um, for parcel number 1406-6110. It states, what are the existing uses of adjacent land to the parcel and are they compatible? It says, rural properties with no near neighbors, agriculture and hunting lands are adjacent. Is the proposal consistent with the town vision statement as found in the town comprehensive plan? Mark, yes. Rural businesses are encouraged in the town, has proper facilities to maintain bathroom and washing facilities. All proper maintenance is done. Is the proposal consistent with the town goals, objectives, and development strategies as found in the town comprehensive plan? Mark yes. Encouraging small business and town with a family feel. Property has adequate parking and enough buildings. If applicable, please list, list recommendations or conditions for the Wapak County Planning and Zoning Committee to consider. There are none from the town of Madison. It is signed uh, recommending approval by the Town Plan Commission and the Town Board, signed Wayne Federowitz and Michael Melbourne. Thank you. Does the Planning and Zoning Office have a recommendation? 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we do. The, the use fits the, uh, the definition of the home major home occupation, which is a conditional use permit for Hagen Woodland and Transition District. Um, the township has recommended the approval of it without any conditions. The only letter that we received is in, in favor of the application, so we would also be in favor of this application being approved. Okay, thank you. Does the planning and zoning office, uh, uh, there, there's no conditions, so that's that's okay. Are there any other questions from the committee at this point? Seems pretty straightforward. Good to have a business in there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second that motion. Thank you, moved by Supervisor Monk, seconded by Supervisor Kussman to approve the conditional use permit. Would you roll call vote? Kussman? Yes. Monk? Yes. Betterwitz? Yes. Murphy? Yes. Nygaard? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, motion to close that hearing. Thank you, Mr. Second. I'll second it. Moved by Supervisor Kussman, seconded by Supervisor Monk to close this conditional use permit hearing on favor signified by saying aye. Uh, Those opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Thank you. Continuing. With that, we'll call the second public hearing in order. The purpose of this hearing is to take testimony regarding the application for Alan J. and Michelle M. Zaginski, located in part of the southeast quarter, the southwest quarter of section 18 in the town of Madison. Flying along Highway 156, letter number E9922, Opaca County, Wisconsin, parcel number 1418644, for a conditional use permit, animal husbandry, and horse keeping in an agricultural enterprise AE district on approximately 6.74 acres. Will the secretary read the names of the persons notified of this year? We notify Dwayne Federowitz, Chairman, Town of Matson, Michael Melberg, Clerk, Town of Matson, Dan Bakey, Supervisor, Greg Hansen, Supervisor, Ellen Michelle Jagosinski, uh, Dave Mira, and Kelly Nicholas with the Wisconsin Department of Transportation or Suncoe Region, Bill Resbeck with the Department of Natural Resources, as well as Thomas C. Boldig, uh, the Dunleavy Family Farms LLC et al. Lehman Family Irrevocable Trust and Scott M. Reed. Hereby direct a copy of this affidavit to be filed as a part of the record of these proceedings. The committee has conducted an on site inspection of the property and will now hear the application for Alan and Michelle. Will the applicant or their agent please come forward and be sworn in to testify? Are they zooming or phone or? Ellen and Michelle, is that? This, this is, yeah, I'm sorry. It was, I had a muting issue here. Um, Michelle Yagajinski, E9922, State Highway 156, Clintonville, 54929. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, for the record, uh, I'm I'm Jim Nygaard, the chair. I'm going to swear you in and ask you to state your name and address again. So, if sure. You please stand and raise your right hand. Okay. If you swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you. So, again, state your name and address for the record sure. and explain Mi your request. Sure, Michelle M. Yagajinski, E9922 State Highway 156, Clintonville, Wisconsin, 54929. Um, my request is to have a conditional use permit for my horses um, that I have on my property. Okay, so so uh, I guess what the deal is here, it's the number of horses versus the number of acres. Correct. So... Uh, what, what's what's your plan here for for acres versus animals? So I um, rent 14 acres from Ralph Wagner, who is my dad. And I also have four acres that I use of Melody Gretzinger's. And we have 
um, lemons and reeds um, that are able to take the manure. Um, lemons took it already this spring, and it sounds like they're going to take it again this fall. Uh, just pile the manure in the meantime, then, and. Uh... I'm pardon. What was that? I'm sorry. You just put the manure in a pile in the meantime, then, or uh, have a place to. Store? So yes, we've got we've got a concrete um, slab out back, and we just put it on the concrete slab, and then they come and they take it. It's not a real big pile right now. Sure. How many horses do you have currently? Currently on the property right now, I have eight. Um, I do own 10. We've had them for many years. And um, I was actually looking to purchase a place that was, you know, zoned agriculture for this reason um, that I had the horses. But we've been using this land, you know, for many, many years. So I came into this not really aware of the fact that I would have had to go through all of this. So Shelly, uh, Jason Snyder, zoning administrator here. Just for clarification, the, the animal unit density worksheet that you filled out, nine horses and one miniature horse, is that correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Just to clarify, where is this rented land? The rented land, the rented land is out in um, one of it, the 14 acres is in the township of Heartland the Shawano County and the other four acres is in the township of Waukesha in Shawano County. I came from the Shawano County area. Okay, so you're going to have to transport these animals to that, to that rented land and that other land up by Shawano. Right. We've, we've done that in the past. Um, we also used um, some of that 14 acres to produce our hay. And we, we did reach out to Shawano County to make sure that it was okay to have animals on these properties and they did verify the density that they are located. They have a shelter on both those other properties as appropriate? That, that I don't know. Um, and that wouldn't fall, I don't know if that would fall under our regulation for Shawano County. It'd be Shawano. So both of them are in Shawano County. They are two of the two of the three properties that we have lease agreements are in Shawano County. Correct me if I'm wrong, Shelly, I'm sorry. Um, the Reeds are, are right down the road there, but understand correctly. So on those properties, there is a barn on my dad's property and it does have area for shelter along with a big machine shed. On Melody Gretzinger's, there is a big machine shed along with lean twos because she has had horses out there years ago. How far is that away from your house? Where you live? Um, it's about 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. So it's a, it's a part of your daily routine to make the rounds and give them water and make sure the fences are okay. And that would be right now. They're all at my property right now. Okay. Is there a limit on how many she can have on her property? Um, but there, there are, and that's one of the reasons that we have the lease agreements is that secure additional acreage to care for the animals. So the, in addition to the acres that she has on her property, in addition to the lease acres, there is sufficient amount for our ordinance for the number of animals that are allowed to be The lease taken picture. Right? Next to her property? No, no, no. There are no ones here. Where are we? Shawn County. Yep, Shawn. But she can have that many on her property at one time, or as, does as have to have some on each property? As long as we have that additional lease acreage, they, there's no requirement as to where they keep them or how often they get cycled from one property to another. And, and they got the idea of situation here because they got the old barn here, so I mean, they got right. plenty of stuff. Okay. Right. And part Great. of the idea is to have the land base yeah. for them for, for feed and for yeah. All right. Yeah. I think, Michelle, isn't your, does your dad live near Slap City? Yes. In fact, I, I never told you, but I do know your dad. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure a lot of people do because of the whitewashing. Yeah. So she can keep all her horses on 156 for a period of time? 
we don't really have any requirement that they get bounced for the other ones. As 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 the, there's something available other than that. Correct. So that it, it, it would be up to her to, to distinguish which property would be <coughs> appropriate at the, any given time. That's correct. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Okay. So as far as an animal welfare question, the bases are covered here. Yes. And that's that uh, is for everybody's protection. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I believe, Michelle, when you came to us, we actually added one or two horses to your request to make sure you had enough. Yeah, I did that um, just to make sure that I had enough. And that was kind of, you know, like asked. And I'm like, well, just to make sure I don't plan on going over any of that. But um, I just don't want to put myself in a situation where all of a sudden I have a bread mare <laughs> and it's like, whoa. So I just want to make sure I'm within my guidelines, within my limits, and that um, I can continue to take good care of my animals. So, Are these horses uh, a kind of a business for you or are they, they used, pets or what? They used to be in the past and that is why I have that many. And now it's just kind of, um, since I've had my kids, um, it's more of like just um, leisure, you know, go and ride, go and pet them. Um, my kids really enjoy them. So, and Shelly, just for just for clarification, for the record, how how many horses are you looking to have an approval for today? Um, so, what I'm looking at is twelve to be set up, but I have ten. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, but when we had our comprehensive planning meeting. I suggest that to go up to 12 because she certainly has the ability. I mean, this is probably one of the unique situations where you've got a concrete barnyard, even, and you've got the barn. So she has no problem with the housing. She's got adequate room to uh, get feed. And I think even your husband's got access to some other land, too, doesn't he? Yes, he does. His um, dad owns um, like 98 or 100 acres um, out in Shawano County as well. So they, Basis. And I felt 12 was good. We had no problem with it. At least if she ever gets the 12 or has that extra mare that's <laughs> broken. Yeah. Okay. Any further questions from the committee? Thank you, Michelle. Just stay online for a little while longer in case any more questions come up. And uh, we're going to open the floor for more testimony if there is any. Thank you. Is there any other testimony in favor of this application? Any further testimony in favor of this application? Third time, is there any further testimony in favor of this application? Seeing none, is there any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Third call, any testimony in opposition to this application? Last call for any kind of testimony. Seeing none, are there any letters? We do have the town recommendation form, Mr. Chairman, for parcel 14-18-64-4. What are the existing uses of adjacent lands to this parcel and are they compatible? Rural, farming, pastures, and fields, yes, it is consistent and compatible. Is the proposal consistent with the town vision statement as found in the town comprehensive plan? Yes, rural life and maintaining the land for agriculture related activities. Is the proposal consistent with town goals, objectives, and development strategies as found in the town comprehensive plan? Yes, by promoting and supporting rural life activities in a responsible manner. It is signed recommending approval by the Town Plan Commission and Town Board, signed Dwayne Federitz and Michael Mel Melder. Thank you. Does the Planning and Zoning Office have a recommendation? We do, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, in, in light of the fact that they have an adequate land base for the, the animals that are out there, and the fact that the town is in favor, we are also in favor of approval this application. Okay, are there any more questions from the committee? In view of the testimony we've heard this morning, I would make a motion to approve this application. Thank you, Mr. Second. Second. Okay. Motion to 
moved by Supervisor Cusman, seconded by Supervisor Murphy to approve the conditional use permit uh, and presented. Is the roll call vote again? Cusman? Yes. Mark? Yes. Federal? Yes. Murphy? Yes. Nygaard? Yes. Motion carries. Motion to close this year. There is a second. Second. Moved by Supervisor Cusman, seconded by Supervisor Murphy to close this hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, with that, we'll call the third public hearing to order. The purpose of this hearing is to take testimony regarding the application for Aaron Olson, located in part of the Northwest Quarter, the Northeast Quarter, Section 22, Township of Madison, lying along Ulrich Road and State Highway 156, wire number E11126, Papa County, Wisconsin, parcel number 14, 23. For an after the fact conditional use permit, temporary occupancy of an RV in excess of 30 days on an agricultural and woodland transition AWT district on approximately seven acres. Will the secretary read the names of the persons notified of this hearing? We notified Wayne Federwitz, Chairman, Town of Matson, Michael Melberg, Chair or Clerk, Town of Matson, Dan Banky, Supervisor. Greg Hansen, Supervisor, Aaron Olson, owner, Dave Mira and Kelly Nicholas with the Wisconsin Department of Transportation, North Central Region, Kyle Zybaum with the Army Corps of Engineers, Hartman Creek State Park, as well as Sandra L. Carpenter, Joseph J. Dagaline, Kermit W. and Dolores E. DeRosier, Daniel B. and Linda S. Gretzinger, Donald and Karen Krieger, James R. and Barbara A. Merholt, uh, Dominic Dominico and Nancy A. Piccolo Family Trust, J.N. and Lori A. Chavo. I hereby direct a copy of this affidavit to be filed as a part of the record of these proceedings. The committee has conducted an on site inspection of this property and will now hear the application of Aaron Olson. Will the applicant or their agent please come forward and be sworn to testify? No answer. Talked to him on Saturday and he said he'd be at work. Um, he he had work. cleared it with his employer. So I don't know. I talked to him Friday and he said that uh, I gave him a time frame right around now. Um, he said his boss gave him permission to accept the call on, on time. But and then he needs to go outside again. Where does he live right now? Where does he work? Oh, um, in Outagamie County. Yes, a little Aaron? Oh. 
Okay, I'm gonna put you. No, you don't sound so bad. I tell you what, I'm gonna put you on speakerphone so we can uh, you be uh, live with the planning and zoning committee. Okay, Aaron, you're on speakerphone. Hi. Aaron. All right. Hello, Aaron. Good morning. This, yeah, good morning. Yeah. This is Jim Nygaard. I'm the committee chair. Uh, if you could stand, please, and raise your right hand. I'm gonna swear you in. Are you ready? Yep. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. State your name and address and uh, tell us what uh, what this is about here. Uh, my name is Aaron Olson. Uh, do you want my mailing address or property address? Mailing address. Your mailing address. Yes. Okay. W. 7178 Cole Road, Chiocton, Wisconsin, 54170. Uh, this is so I can legally live in my camper until my house is built, I guess. And now with the uh, cost of building supplies and I can't get either of my builders out this fall, I have to wait till spring. I'm hoping we can run this through probably next summer before the house will be ready to move in. And then I want to get rid of that damn camper. <laughs> that's not something I want permanent. Yeah, that's, that's uh, we, there's quite a bit of that. Uh, contractors seem to be swamped with work. Oh, yeah. And, uh, oh, it's just crazy. I can't get a septic company out till spring. Nothing right now. And then a two by four is almost six dollars. So, <laughs> yeah. well, maybe if I hold off until next spring, maybe. <laughs> start cutting some trees and saw in our own lumber pretty soon again. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you're, you're planning on, on living out there or you have been living out there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So th this is just about making sure that it's- safe. You are pretty hard to hear. I'll say that. I can hardly hear you. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I wish I had my earbuds. Maybe it would help. This is uh, to ensure uh, living conditions are healthy and safe, uh, and not not putting yourself or neighbors at risk. So that's 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 why when it's more than a thirty day occupancy, that they would like to have this uh, have some conditions met to make sure everything's in order. So right. Uh, so oh, what go ahead um aaron this is uh duane Federwitz. you probably remember me when your hearing was there at the town of madison yep um i just want to mention that uh, aaron has really done us a service he, <laughs> he came in here and this property was a complete mess and how much junk did you clean out of there oh i think the first run was just over two thousand pounds and I've got another pile right now. I just, I don't know, it's maybe three weeks ago, I finished cleaning up what was left from whatever trailer or whatever the heck was there. So I've got another big pile. That's probably closer to 3,500 pounds on the ground right now. I got to get put on my trailer and haul out. But then it should all be done. Well, I believe I, really I found everything that was left behind, unless it's buried more than three foot deep. We, uh, like we said at that meeting, we we really appreciate you buying this property. Unfortunately, coming from out of Gamey County, you didn't know you needed a permit, but uh, that's kind of sad too. But the point is, you, you're an asset to our township. <laughs> well, I hope that's a good thing. <laughs> I'll have to second that motion. <laughs> Because I know, I know what it looked like before and for years before. And it, it's okay. Certainly, you've certainly done a lot of work out there. It, it's oh, it's, it's actually been a lot of fun. So tractors okay. are fun to have. Not too many people are back. cleaning up somebody else's mess. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and Mr. Olson, this is Zoning Administrator Jason Snyder. Just to, I wanted to touch base with you on the sanitary uh, aspect of this application. I think on the application, you noted that you're utilizing a a camping transfer unit on the property at this time. Does that sound right? Uh, can you repeat that? So for, for sanitary conditions for the property, um, 
what, what are you utilizing right right now? For? I think you, you had said on your application a black uh, transfer unit. Is that what you have working out there right now? I have a 300 gallon. I'm assuming it's considered like a a permanent campsite. It, I, I bought the camper from a campground, and they had a 300 gallon gallon holding tank that I purchased along with the camper. So I have that hooked up, and then like every six months, I have someone come and pump it. So in terms of just not cheap, but right, and the county actually doesn't allow those uh, for use outside of campground situations. Typically, we have a portable toilet that's utilized for sanitary needs on the property. I just wanted to make you aware of that when we're talking today that. That's something that we're going to have to address on the property. Okay. You plan I guess on I can just quit using it and I go crap somewhere else. <laughs> you plan on That's staying? the only thing I use it for is the toilet. Sure. I don't shower there, nothing. Sure. So typically we just have, have you have a, a portable toilet place on the property and have a contract with a licensed pumper. All right. I'll have to look into that. Okay. You plan on staying there all winter? Yeah, I'm going to have to now with not being able to get my builder out. Okay, the other address that you gave, and what was that, Chiaston? Uh, that's, it's actually only four miles from the property. It's my okay. parents' address. It's right at the county line. Okay. Like okay. four miles down the road, but yet it's Chiaston address. It's kind of odd. On 187 there? Uh, no, it's uh right off of 156 well kind of 156 187 corner it's right in that little pocket that's okay. where i grew up okay so you're pretty close to your folks who's home yep okay. so if it gets to be 30 below you got a place to go if that camper freezes up <laughs> oh yeah my first winter i was learning the hard way and i had to bug out for three nights but i got it all figured out now so now it's actually quite efficient the way I set it up for winter. Okay. It actually does quite well. I'm impressed with it. Okay, uh, thank you. We're gonna call for an additional testimony if there is any. So just okay. uh, please hang around for a few more minutes uh, in case we have more questions. Okay. Is there any further testimony in favor of this application? Any further testimony in favor of this application? Third time, any further testimony in favor of this application? Seeing none, is there any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Third call, any testimony in opposition to this application? Any further testimony? Here's, there's none. Are there any letters? There are. We've got the town recommendation form for parcel 14-22-12-3. Um, what are the existing uses of adjacent lands to this parcel and are they compatible? Rural, wooded lands, and agricultural fields, very compatible. Is the proposal consistent with the town vision statement as found in the town comprehensive plan? Yes. Camper is temporary. We'll be building a home uh, in spring. Area has been cleaned up significantly from the past. Is the proposal consistent with the town goals, objectives, and development strategies as found in the town comprehensive plan? Uh, yes, by building a new home at the site in the near future and by cleaning up the property that the current landowner has already done. And we have it signed, uh, recommending approval by the town plan commission and town board, signed Dwayne Federis and Michael Melberg. Thank you. Does the planning and zoning office have a recommendation? Uh, we do, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think Supervisor Federowitz and Supervisor Christman have nailed the head. He's done a lot to improve the property out there. It's a temporary situation for us. Um, as long as we have a county approved sanitary uh, facility on the property, uh, we are in favor of approval of the application. Yes, sir. I have uh, two, two questions here. Um, first of all, going back to notification, I, I noticed that you notified Hartman Creek. Is there a rational reason there? Usually when there's weapons associated with it or any type of DNR related. Um, That's why that comes up. By them. Okay. And my other question is, Jason and, and Ryan, is if you work with him, uh, you heard him say he's trying to get the septic out there and everything. I think maybe if he could get a septic field in this fall yet, 
Oh, he could hook it up to that. So I oh, think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, certainly. Yes. I yeah, guess yeah. I don't think just so he understands that. So I yeah. think right now the way you left it hanging, he's got to move. Just okay. Yeah. Makes oh, sense. sure. Is there any existing septic systems on the property from the previous occupants? I don't believe so. I know there was a soil test that was done on the property. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there was a soil test done on the property already. That was I don't think he could hear you. Did you did you hear that, Aaron? It, did, do you know if there's an existing septic system on the property? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I would have to assume probably some old metal piece of crap got buried. I kept waiting for my tractor to fall in a hole, but it never happened. <laughs> it is per it's perk tested for some at level something or other, like a mini mound or something, I believe. Yep, so an accurate is what the yep. perk test showed. Right. So I believe I was out there with Rich Keats on well, about a decade ago, actually looking at it, so an accurate system is what it is. But there, there's no no evidence of an existing system. So that option would be there if he would put in his septic system for his new construction. He could tie into it with his camper for the time being until the house is. Um, yeah, that would mm -hmm. that would definitely be doable. Certainly. I think he was saying though that it might be tough to get the contractor out there this fall yet. Sure. Um, Accurate are dependent on soil conditions too. And if it stays too wet, it's hard to get the man out. Memory serves it's pretty sandy out there, so it might not be as good as you said. Okay. Is there any other questions from the committee at this at this point? Knowing the history, there's probably a 55 gallon drum out there for a holding tank. <laughs> there might be a few of them. <laughs> right. There could be a series of them. Somebody shot a 30 30 rifle through a dozen seconds. Probably rusted it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No yeah, yeah, based on some of the crap I've already dug up, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any other questions from the committee at this point? I guess, Mr. Chairman, under the circumstances, uh, I think we're all clear. I make a recommendation to approve our present. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Moved by Supervisor Federwood, seconded by Supervisor Cusman to approve the request the roll call vote for the conditional use permit, Kutzman? Yes. Mutt? Yes. Federwood? Yes. Murphy? Yes. Nygaard? Yes. Motion carries. Is there a motion to close? Motion to close again. Thank you. I'll second. Moved by Supervisor Kutzman, seconded by Supervisor Mutt to close this conditional use permit hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. That's that. We'll call the. Is this the fourth one? Yeah, it's the third. It's third on here. That's right. It should be fourth, but we'll call the fourth public hearing to order. So, this hearing is to take testimony regarding the application for Dustin Noshes, located in part of the northeast corner, the southeast corner, section 36. Township of Madison, Lyon Long County Road I, fire number N12030, Opatha County, Wisconsin, parcel number 1436412, for a modification of an existing zoning committee decision, uh, which was made on March 13 of 2017, for a conditional use permit, uh, CP003 dash. Uh, 2017 in an agricultural and woodland transition AWT district on approximately 10.6 acres. So the secret, secretary read the names of the persons notified of this hearing. Uh, we notified Dwayne Federwitz, Chairman, Town of Matson, Michael Melberg, Clerk, Town of Matson, Dan Banky, Supervisor, Greg Hansen, Supervisor, Dustin Natius. Casey Byersdorf with the Wapaka County Highway Department, Kyle Zybon with the Army Corps of Engineers, Herman Creek State Park, as well as Audrey and Russell Adams, Carla A. and Daniel J. Conlin, Gerald W. at L. Gorch, Mark and Lynn A. Strick, Denise Shirley Wedzinski, Charles, Charles Van Dalwick, and Stephen Vandalek at Al. 
Would you by direct a copy of this affidavit be filed as part of the record of these proceedings? The committee has conducted an on site inspection on this property. We'll now hear from uh, hear the application of Dustin Washes. Will the applicant or his agent please come forward and be sworn to testify? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You swear the testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Thank you. Uh, that's the microphone, so if you can speak in that direction, state your name and address and uh, what this change is about. My name is Dustin Natius. My address is E12030 County Road I, Clintonville, Wisconsin, 54929. Um, my previous conditional usage permit, I had uh, cattle on the property for over the animal unit. I no longer have the cattle, so I'm getting that taken off of the conditional usage permit. Um, I was required to have a six foot privacy fence up all the way around the property. Um, I would like to have the option of planting trees or putting up a solid wood fence. And once the privacy from the natural cover or new cover is appropriate to take down the um, black see-through fence just because it don't hold up very well to the weather and it technically could probably provide a little better privacy. And raising uh, the number of uh, dogs I'm allowed on the property from 40 to 75. What? Huh? The number of what? Dogs. Dogs. Yep. Because my current permit is, um, from my understanding in Wapaka County, anytime you have over three litters a year, you're required to have a commercial breeding facility license. Is that what it is? We're, we're selling any animals. We're selling them. So, so it's not limited to three, it's just that we're selling any mm -hmm. Okay. So if somebody's dog uh, has a batch of puppies and they, they uh, just give them away or sell them for cash and it's just a one-time deal then that's different than somebody who's yeah because i'm i'm licensed through the state for the usda where um their rule is anybody that um has three litters or 25 puppies a year they show up um once a year the first two years and then it's um once every 18 to 24 months and it's unnoticed they do inspections tech the well-being of the dogs, make sure you have appropriate housing and feed and um, all that stuff. And then a little different than the breeders in our area, I, I raise all registered dogs. So once every other year, they, the American Kennel Club, they come out and they have a inspection process to where they want to make sure the dogs have everything appropriate and are, you know, obviously taken care of through the state. They focus a lot more on socialization pro plan. So you have to have all that stuff posted. You can't just have dogs and lock them up. They got to get out. They got to be socialized. They got to, you know, I guess they're, they want animals obviously taken care of appropriately. Are you going to do any training or? Um, for know. my own use, I do. I, um, I was in about five or six different states last year, field trial on beagles. And so I have beagles in labs, but, um, I field trial and I hunt my beagles in my labs. They're English labs. I raise more of a, they're therapy dogs. So they go to, you know, they do go as family pets, but a lot of people buy them for, they have disabilities or they use them for, a lot of them they sense uh, different things just on the human from their breath on if sugar levels are getting low or different, you know, things that may be occurring with their health, so. Three, three different personalities of breed. You got the, the laid back labs and the, the wound up beagles. <laughs> the, the funny thing is, is if you, if you breed for proper, you know, genetic traits, the beagles actually are a lot quieter than you'd think. And the reputation they get's a little different than what they're really like. But. Yeah. How many dogs a year do you sell? Um, this year for my state license, um, I had 91 puppies I sold. Do you do this for a full-time job or do you have a... I 
I quit my job. When I first got licensed, I had a full-time job as a union construction worker. I did um, about two years ago, quit full-time work. And I do help um, a buddy who does siding and construction work some, but it's getting to be much more minimal just because I stay plenty busy with the dogs. I guess when I don't have puppies and the work's less, I work outside, but when I have puppies and there's a lot more work, I limit the hours I work outside. So you're home 90% of the time? Oh, I'm home every day. So, but I shouldn't say that. When I go to field travel, I'm gone for a night or two, but my fiance lives with me and she takes care of the dogs or my brother comes over, but. But that's free labor. I don't have any employees. <laughs> yeah. And the brother lived with me a couple of times whenever he gets kicked out and I don't charge him. So he owes me a few favors. <laughs> so you, you, you had dogs on the property for a while and the, the situation with the neighbors has been relatively peaceful, smooth. How's it been going with the neighbors? All about one neighbor's been good, but I do truly believe with the one neighbor, it hasn't been. Um, I do believe we're coming to more common grounds on it and starting to build a little better neighbor relationship. But uh, they actually called me yesterday, and with one of the things, you know, they want to be involved in with. Uh, you know, deciding when the proper privacy is up. So they wanted their names added and I just had neighbors on there. So, you know, they're actually contacting me and working, you know, like I told them, you know, whatever you guys require, if we got better ideas, you know, feel free. Let's make things as good as we can. Yeah. I just want to clarify when you say, when, when he talks about neighbors, his immediate people that live there that are neighbors have no problems. The ones that had some issues, if you remember from three years ago, were the individuals that own land in Shawano County and live in the valley. So, well, because they come up to hunt. We had a lengthy meeting for the comprehensive planning. What did it last, hour and a half? Yeah, a long time. <laughs> but I think we talked through a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. And after the meeting, they even talked outside with the individuals and I think Dustin felt a little intimidated originally because he would wave to these people after that 2017 and they'd never wave back and things of this neighborhood. Not all of them. One, one was okay. The neighbors to the to west, the, yeah, so. um, you know, they stop by and I go over there and uh, actually the one has MS, I help him. When he gets trees that fall over, I help him cut up trees and so I help him out and I think he was more there just because he just wants to know what's going on. And I don't think he is leaning either way. He just, um, he's got a food plot behind my one dog pen and he just wants to make sure that some trees get planted there or something. So the dogs can't see out there. If I take down the privacy fence, which is a hundred percent understandable. And I, and I think then after listening to everybody, and it happens that one of the individuals on our comprehensive planning committee is, is Mr. Dale Kloot, very active hunter, has been to Africa and all over the place. Okay. But the point is, he brought up that he says dogs, after a while, uh, they're immune, uh, the deer get immune to the dog sound. So it really doesn't interfere with hunting. No. And that kind of simplified and, and nullified certain issues. But to pacify everybody, this, and that might come up a little later, I said to them that life's too short to not get along, and they all agreed to that. And they came up, uh, I said, Dustin, you come up with a statement that I'm just going to read this to whom it may concern. The current privacy set fence for the dog pen will remain in place until a better one can be built or trees are planted and provide a prop appropriate privacy. I plan on consulting with my neighbors and then he lists these individuals in the valley, okay? And getting their opinion on the new fence before the old one is taken down. And he signed this and I think they got a copy. I um I just sent it to him. Well, whatever. Yeah, so, but, but they both responded through the text message with the, um, I just took a picture of it and they both responded that um, 
the one did say that he would like me to state their name, so that's why I added it in at this time. And uh, he stated the size of the trees, but like I told his brother yesterday, you plant trees in a row and they're four feet apart, they might need to be this big. If you do four rolls of trees and they're staggered, they might only need to be this wide, you know? So that's where the appropriate, and they're the ones that get to determine it. You know, I'm, I'm in no hurry to take it down. It's just once they feel it's appropriate, um, it's, you know, because it's not a fence that's going to last forever. And I would rather have something that's more forever than having to pay for it and replace it before that time comes. So. And as a result of all that conversation, one of our conditions are our township wants to review it in one year to make sure mm -hmm. everything's following through. And before I could even add dogs, their big thing too was with more dogs. I would have to, to meet the state guidelines, I would have to, I'm only capable of having right around 40 to 50 dogs, depending on, you know, the size of the dog. Cause you required so many square feet for inside area, outside area, exercise area. So it's not like this gets approved. I can just go buy a bunch more dogs and keep them on the property because the state has pretty detail, you know. So like I told them, it's not like all of a sudden tomorrow there's gonna be 70 dogs there. It's just um I guess it gives the option down the road and technically once a dog, a puppy, if it's not sold by 20 weeks old. <laughs> they have to get rabies shots and be licensed, even though that dog's still for sale. So if, you know, I actually ran into that issue, not knowing at the time, so I registered my dogs and she goes, absolutely. Them are supposed to be licensed, even if they're only at your place for another two weeks. So that'll technically put me over. So it'll just give me more flexibility for issues like that. And one last thing I want to state. The individual has different dogs. Our township is not, what should I say, out of tune with dogs. We have another individual that has 110 dogs in our township. So it's not a unique situation. Well, even when I spoke with them yesterday, I go, you got to met the dog. Because even me, I had see-through dog doors. I put solid dog doors in. I made bigger areas inside. So now they spend more time inside, they can't see outside. So I mean, I'm constantly trying to do things to help them. It just, um, like I told them yesterday when they called me, I go, you got them that they're significantly better than when I moved here and they don't bark anywhere near as much as the neighbor on the corner. And he goes, I will give you that. And I go, you know, so I think, I think they're coming around to, or we both are, as, you know. I would agree with that observation that the deer being that the dogs are there all the time, the deer will get used to them. And we see deer in, in town all the time, I, no matter what town you live in. And, and uh, they're just making the rounds and there's backyard dogs and the deer seem to know which dog is gonna chase them and which one won't. I belong to a beagle club. There's a hundred acres fenced in and there's rabbits in there. We have 40 members, there's probably anywhere from two to eight people a day that run dogs in that ground where dogs are driving rabbits and running. I'm the only one that bow hunts it on four cameras in the last week I had right around a thousand pictures of deer. So <laughs> I never explain it to try to argue with people or convince them different, but deer truly, you know, they're only scared of things that cause harm to them. And like I tell them people, I mow right along the dog pen in the back where the goats used to be, the deer come right up to the dog pen. <laughs> but but like I said, everybody's got a different look at it and it's not my job to convince people different. We all have feelings and feel differently. Okay, thank you. Is there any other questions from the committee? Thank you. If you just want to take a seat and stick around until uh, we call for further testimony. Is there any <clears throat> further testimony in favor of this application? Any further testimony in favor of this application? Any further testimony, third time, in favor of this application? Seeing none, is there any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony in opposition to this application? Third time, last call, any testimony in opposition to this application? Any testimony whatsoever? 
Seeing none, are there any letters? There are. We have the town recommendation form for parcel 1436412. What are the existing uses of adjacent lands to this parcel and are they compatible? Hunting lands, wooden lands, hay fields across the road. Is the proposal consistent with the town vision statement as found in the town comprehensive plan? Yes. Family run dog breeding business fully licensed by the state. Is the proposal consistent with the town goals, objectives, and development strategies as found in the town comprehensive plan? Yes. By maintaining a clean facility with the proper animal health care and nutrition, vet checks, fenced areas for dogs to run. If applicable, please list recommendations for the uh, Wapaka County Planning and Zoning Committee to consider. Would like to review in one year. This is signed by the Town Planning Commission and Town Board recommending approval by Dwayne Frederick and Michael Melbert. Okay, thank you. Does the Planning and Zoning Office have a recommendation? We do, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, given the township's position, and in light of where we are with this, um, we would, we would uh, recommend approval of this with the conditions that they be allowed to um, increase the number of dogs on the property up to 75. Um, that we review it in one year, and also that we amend the, the privacy fence to allow for natural vegetation. Is that, Dwayne, maybe you can help me with the wording on, on that one. Is the privacy fence, the idea being the privacy fence stays in place until the vegetation is up? Either vegetation or some type of a wood fence comes along that he puts up whatever. Like, okay. Just in front of the roadside, you can kind of see through the dogs and you always get cars stopped in there and I'm on them sharp corners. Okay. So I would like to put more of a wood fence there, just okay. more for safety for people on the road because there's days there's literally people parked right in the middle of the road and you see cars coming and it's like, I just, I guess my big thing is, is hopefully it discourages people. I, I suppose when you see 25 beagles out in the yard running around playing stuff, because you can kind of see the shadow of the dogs through it. Sure. And that. Uh, that's more the reason for it than anything. It's not for, you know, I, I have no concern other than I don't like uh, people stopping in front of the house on the curb. And, but So then the front portion of the fence, they replace with a wooden fence and then other areas screened with vegetation. Is that what we're looking for? Ultimate goal is to put trees there. Okay. Yeah, trees and like I, like we, you know, um, you know, before we had a height and stuff, but you know, the road tips up a little higher. So in spots, it may have to be a little taller. I guess the big thing is, is whenever you're around it and a human standing where the dogs can't see out and the human can't see it, you know, so that's why I want to include the neighbors because um, obviously it ain't done yet. And um, it's something that's going to be better than what's up. But like you said, you kind of need some sort of, yeah, some type of metrics and what we're but yeah, it'll be more or less natural vegetation or, you know, a solid privacy cut down. So was it discussed then at the town level as so how it gets determined that it's now considered to be appropriate to take down the fence and, the, and now the vegetation is sufficient? I think it was, a, it was a addressed this way, Ryan, that after one year, first of all, we'll have a better idea from a noise standpoint and everything else. And we'll also see the progress that has been made. They all agreed and uh, Dustin stated too, economically, it's not feasible to accomplish everything right away. Okay. So I think one year from now, I'll better. Idea. Okay. So the idea is we can, we can further discuss the, the right. fencing issue in a year. Right. Perfect. And okay. I, the big thing at the hearing is I didn't want to really stir the pot. A lot of the issues that were brought up were more in their argument to why they would like to see the animal number stay down. And once they realized, oh, he's allowed to have more, I think most of the issues went out the window. So I I personally don't believe the issues are as bad as they may have sounded at the time. It was more of, here's my argument why I don't think it should happen. Well, once it, you know, then that's kind of like, ah, well, that argument don't work because maybe it, that right slightly, you know. Sure. But um okay. but we did also say that we would include them. So like I said, I I'm in no hurry to take it down if they say, hey, I'd like to let these trees grow another year. Let let them grow another year. You know, I'm in no hurry. So revisiting that next year then yep. is all like the one property line on the um west side, it's all big. You literally you can't it's literally like looking at a wall four feet away. I mean it's solid 
pine trees and even in the back you can see in my field but it's solid pine trees all along the back except for that one corner into a food plot when the farmer used to rent mine in there they drove over them trees so he had like trees planted there so then the dogs don't see out past my property so, and like i told them you know it's it's a hundred percent with the reason i mean it's not like they're being ridiculous about it so I'm trying to remember what side of the road the power line might be on there if it's on your side or the up or the by side. side. Yeah. So then the fence would be a better option anyway than planting something that's gonna grow up under a but the fence would be um even the trees, because I would still want an exposed front yard from the road. Okay. It would be you know quite a ways up into the yard from oh, the okay. Well sounds like it's uh figured out pretty good here. If there isn't any other questions from the committee, I guess we'd be in, I'm trying to remember where we left off. Going off this recommendation. Yes, yeah. you recommended, so. We did, yeah. yeah. Then we're in order to have a motion to approve. I guess I would recommend based on what we talked about and also the one year review as mentioned. Um, would the one year review be like we talked at the town hall or would it be through the county level? That would be at this level yeah. or there'd be no fees associated. Okay. Because I know we talked about possibly doing one just at the town hall if needed or I didn't know how that works. So. And that's our prerogative. We can do it too. I mean, it's probably, it'll still come here. Ultimately, but yeah. we might have it at our local level too. So we, yeah, we, we always reach out to the township and we never review them, sure that they know what's going on. And just uh, keep peace with it. The last time they were concerned because they didn't feel like they were notified appropriately because we're going to have a one year review. Just they were speaking on their behalf a little bit. They were here for the, but no, yeah. we never had the one. Oh, year the one year review. review. No, that did not happen. Yeah. Right. Yep. 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 But, Okay. We'll make sure that I'm there notified that they're on our list of people to be notified for the one year review. I'll second that motion. Moved by Supervisor Federer, seconded by Supervisor Muff to uh, approve the modification of this conditional use permit with all the uh, details listed. Roll call vote. Cosman. Yes. Muff. Yes. Federer. Yes. Murphy. Yes. Nygaard. Yes. Motion carries. Moved by Supervisor Clisman, second by Supervisor Muffet. Yep. Conditional yep. use modification mm -hmm. permit carrying. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Thank, Thank you. you. If we get trees at land and water, tree sale. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe he needs more than. Uh, You'll get a deal anyway. Right. Right. That's why you think you need more than a year. I think when they get them are about that big, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, when I was out there Saturday, he was he came out of the shed back there and he was carrying a little puppy. And I talked to him for 20 minutes, maybe. And I heard no dogs bark. But then all of a sudden, they barked. And I had been in the yard a long time. A long time. A long time. Yeah. And he says, well, they must have seen us something or whatever. I forget what he said. And they, they barked only for a minute, you know. When we sure. Sure. Nancy and I, I think he runs a pretty pretty tight ship out there. Yeah, I really do. Nancy and I went for a ride a week ago. And uh, we're one of them that sat in the road. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't hear any barking either. So, yeah, I didn't, but you wouldn't have a clue that there was that many dogs there already. No. So, no, well, like I said, the, the neighbors had no, uh, that lived there actually are supportive. In fact, we had one from Montegami County there uh, come over that night and supported me. Yeah. I think he, he tries, you know. Yeah. Every, if all these dog people would be a workable. We should move on, folks, because the hearing's over. Okay. And you close the hearing. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Diane. Yep, you bet. Okay. Okay, we got a, a few bullet points here. Uh, 
a request to waive the after fact fee from Mark Hall. I'll, I'll let you hand it over to Ben. He's a uh, uh, contact person on this one. Did you want us to read through the letter to get the gist of what we have going on? I think we saw it. Okay, so we'll just hand it over to Ben and explain what we. Oh, Ben, I have something to write up there as well. What's that? We both read that. Oh, yeah, the, oh, the picture for it. That's kind of what I had put together. So, um, ART was issued a permit back in 2017 um, to take off the existing attached garage and rebuild it and make it larger. Um, I was out there when he, he was also, he's not on the water side, but he's completely within 300 feet, but he's still considered shoreland and he's still got to worry about the impervious surfaces. Um, so, he did a permeable. There's supposed to be a permanent little paper driveway to offset the attached garage size. Um, so I was out there when they had first kind of had everything tore up to verify that the depth, the depth of the driveway was going to be okay. Um, went back, I think, in 2019 after the my first initial on site was everything all tore up. The garage you can see is rebuilt. Um, well, there to do. The new measurements um, for all the impervious surfaces. When we got out there, he had a couple different things that were modified, and essentially he exceeded what he was allowed for those impervious surface amounts. Um, he threw in a large amount of gravel on the east, and that would be the west side of the garage, because um, he was assuming that it was going to be more permeable than having to try to grow grass there. Worked with him on a couple different things. We said, okay, we've got these additional previous surfaces that were done. We got to figure out how we're going to lose those to go under our 21. Uh, I think it's around 21.45 percent because that's what we originally had. Um, and as you can see, he was sitting at almost 50 when we went out there the first time. Um, so he was able to remove a lot of that excess gravel on the west side of the garage and still keep a couple of the minor things that he had added that wasn't done in the original 2017 permit. Um, he increased the size of his air conditioning pad. He had to modify the existing deck and replace the stairs. Um, that wasn't actually after the fact that the stairs weren't on there when we were there. Uh, he had put some gravel on the outside of the, um, well, that's, that's a concrete approach, but he must have put concrete inside that existing garage building, but then came outside of the building footprints and, and didn't have a permit for that. Um, he replaced the sidewalk and actually increased the square footage uh, quite a bit on that. Um, and then here is the gravel that she had placed outside of one of the, the, the garage doors on that new addition. So all of those impervious surfaces, the deck stairs was new and then he did some gravel drainage area around that new garage. Um, otherwise, the rest of those impervious surfaces that we got pictures above there were not uh, included on that original permit for the garage. Um, so that's what the after the fact permit was issued. How we could cover those impervious surfaces that were modified or added. So, question impervious surface. How close is he to this? So as of right now, because he, he went ahead and he got him the permit issued, um, and I think that was back when we were at work full time. Uh, so it's been a while since he got it done, but he got everything finished and completed right away. I went back out there and did my final inspection. Uh, so he was allowed 21.45%, he's sitting at 21.44%. Uh, so he's now meeting that requirement with everything that's been completed. He's going to look at doing anything in the future. He's going to either have to do some kind of other mitigation option um, or losing some impervious surfaces out there, which would be pretty difficult considering right now it's really just the house and um, the attached garage, the deck, and the detached garage. Is the deck considered impervious? Yes. Yep. Yep. Pretty much anything that's not going to maintain vegetation um, is going to be considered impervious. So, so if I can I, I clarify that point, and the real issue on the fees after the fact was, is that he didn't, well, 
if he didn't get them, he could just stay with him. Well, and he, yeah, so he did that big garage addition. He put the driveway in like he was supposed to, but then he also, you know, that detached garage, he's got a, a three foot wide uh, concrete approach that he's got on there that wasn't included on the original permit. Um, wasn't there originally when he got the permit in 2017. He replaced that sidewalk and actually made it larger. The air conditioning pad got larger. Uh, he replaced that with last year. And then that little bit of gravel area on the outside of that one garage door. None of those impervious surfaces were included on that first application in 2017. In order to bring him in compliance and up to snuff, he had to get a new shoreline permit from us. Um, and then verify that he wasn't going to exceed that 21.45 concern. So he went way beyond what what he originally was approved for. Right. Yep. These small lots with an average or bigger size house on that are really. And they, they can't do a whole lot when they're in that shoreland zoning. No. And the way our ordinance is set up is that anytime you're you're adding new impervious surfaces or even just replacing an impervious surface, um, there's, you need to get a shoreland permit because you've got to verify that you're not either increasing impervious surfaces beyond what you're already allowed or, or you know, having to trigger that mitigation requirement. And he obviously was informed of his limitations in regard to the impervious service area? Yeah, yeah, I think he worked with um, Gap, I think, on the original 2017 permit that was before my time here. Um, and got everything approved. They knew what square footage he had to work with and, and knew what he had nice spreadsheets that he included in his permit. Um, and then by the time we got out there for the permit expired and all the work was done, it was way beyond what he was supposed to do. I guess I can understand why he would like to have done what he did, but at the same point, him being an engineer, <laughs> he should have had a, a, a little better grasp than average on understanding the situation. I would think I would think when a number is put in front of him as far as how much surface you cannot cannot have. It's kind of hard to comprehend why one would go. Yeah. I think just a common observation that I think gravel is not the same as asphalt or concrete. If water puddles on it, it's not totally true. I have puddles in my gravel always. So. Okay, so. His request is to waive the after the fact. If uh, there's no further discussion, we'd be in order to have a motion to either waive or deny. I'll make a motion to deny based on the fact that he was, there should have been and was uh, aware of the rules. Motion by Supervisor Kussman to deny. I'll second it. Seconded by <coughs> Supervisor Muck. Um, do we need roll call for this or? Production? Yeah, we probably, yeah. Uh, this month, yeah. Mark, yeah. Better what? Yeah. Murphy, yes. Nygaard, yes. Motion carries. <coughs> okay. Next is uh, update on the building. Hello, everybody. Take care. Okay. Thank, thank you, Diane. Diane. Thanks, Diane. Bye. -bye. Yeah. Um, so staffing level discussion. Just before you go on and I end off, uh, on that Olson, I just want to tell you a little bit about that Olson that you probably just hard to comprehend. He bought this property and um, I think he paid like $42,000 tennis or something like that. For it. And think about this. He paid that all off in one year by living in that trailer and being unmarried. I mean, just 
Oh, he's throwing the hundred. Yep, yeah, right. Yeah, I see. Do my wife cost that much? I, I guess that, that's the take home message, huh? I know about our comrades are fighting. Well, let me see how much is this pounds worth. No, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, just think about that 42,000 military takeoff. Anyway, when you're, you're young and single, you can live cheap if you want. Yeah, if you really had to. Yeah. Yeah. And he yeah. does. Yeah. You can go on the north side of 156 there and clean that up too. <laughs> yeah, we get some other properties and, for them. We had to leave the Rogers. No, it's like, oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> that's the new Rogers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I appreciate having a little extra information on all this because it adds comfort level to the decisions. Because we would have probably gone through and approved every one of these, but all the little extra details that you provided mm -hmm. uh, make a difference. Yes. Yeah. 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 I think probably, I think probably uh, half of the calls the sheriff's department got over the period of time that uh, I won't mention any names was there. Uh, they, they, like I say, accounted for half the calls that we got in the area. Well, it's kind of supposed to show up. They bend the rules one way; they're not immune. Well, as they far as he was concerned, there was no rules, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the guy is really out of there the other day, and he was working his ass off. You know, he's, he's just uh, cleaning the place up. He's got piles of junk here, piles of junk there. I saw that and talked to him. And like I said at our meeting, you couldn't insult the guy. He says, "My brother got paid four hundred thousand. Who cares? They just want to do it." That's yeah. great. We yeah. we hardly ever get them. <laughs> yeah. Nice guy, and yeah. Yeah, it's going to improve the value and everything. Oh. No question. No. Oh. And improve the whole neighborhood. Well, yeah. yeah. You bet. Yeah. Maybe the Rogers. Yeah. yeah. Well, if he's interested, we got some more parcels for him if he wants. <laughs> yeah. See, I for me, I wasn't familiar with the area, and I see this kind of work in progress and the straw bales around the camper, and it's like, ah, eh, this looks kind of hokey, but I'm. I you don't know the background. No. Right. Right. Should have seen it before. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Oh. Okay, that's not said there. Yeah. Okay, so building inspection discussion. Uh, well, we get the uh, staffing level uh, discussion. This wasn't on the uh, guidelines, but it was on the agenda. This was a, a last minute amendment uh, to the agenda. Um, so the staffing level discussion, uh, we put this on here because of the, there was an email that got sent out not long ago from uh, Bandy that, uh, and also coming out from Jed talking about our the numbers right now have gotten to the point in the courthouse uh, that we need to start thinking about continuity of operations type of thing for the office. And well, I know that this is a discussion that they're happening uh, county uh, courthouse wide right now. Um, so the idea right now that was uh, that got brought up and I guess one of the reasons why this is even we're even talking about this right now is because there's been other departments uh, like there was one over in Winnebago that the entire department got taken down. Uh, they had eight out of nine managers that got uh, either in uh, positive or under quarantine. And what ended up happening was it essentially crippled the department. It got to be a very challenging situation. So what we're trying to do is avoid that. Um, even when we were going through this back in originally in the March, April range, you know, the, the real process for us or our mindset on this was really to keep our process going, our services being provided so that way the public really has no idea whether or not we're working from home or working in the office. That was kind of the whole, that was the goal to get everything, keep moving all the permits so that way we're not holding anybody up or anything along those lines. And we're getting to that point again, where we got to start getting into or figuring out as an office, how we're going to handle it. A lot of departments right now, uh, they're locking their doors. Uh, it's only by appointment only. If they have that opportunity, we don't have that in planning and zoning. Um, and coincidentally, that gate, um, you know, when we found out that it, that the, it had some unintended consequences by having that gate down, uh, because it forced us to have much more closer interactions with people. So it actually is safer having the gate up, because then that way you have a built-in, now we have built-in barriers and it's working out really well. Sure. So. I don't foresee us uh, right now uh, lowering the gate. You know, um, 
uh, I can say that the conversations that we've been having, we don't see that we're going to be closing our courthouse, you know, uh, same as like Shawn County closed their courthouse. I don't see that happening either because I think that we have, we can, we can make it work using telework so that we can try to keep as the least amount of people in our office as possible, essentially, while keeping all of our services running. So a lot of departments are doing like an A team, B team type of thing, where they're having uh, staff in office for two weeks and then it switches, you know, one half of uh, going telework for two weeks, then they swap back and forth. The problem for us in making that work is that we're not under a statewide lockdown. And so we're still seeing a fair amount of public traffic. And a lot of our code enforcement officers have appointments set up or they are on the phone with people saying, hey, could you stop in? You know, so we have a lot of people still coming, dropping stuff off. So it's hard to have a code enforcement officer be out of the office for two weeks at a stretch because they would lose that personal interaction at the front counter that we have on a more normal basis now. Back when we were in that lockdown, the public, it really, the public traffic dropped down to such a low level that it didn't make all that much a difference. Almost all of our uh, work was being done over the phone, by email, things along those lines. So it's not the case now. So um, right this week, what we're doing in our office is trying to figure out the logistics and figuring out the best way to make it work for us. And that's the same same conversation that's happening in basically every department in the courthouse right now. How we can provide all of our services while still keeping ourselves in a safer situation. Um, the logistics for us is like I said, we get a, the front counter traffic. Um, you wanna make sure that we have uh, access to all of our technology, which is kind of a trick sometimes, but we, we're, we're making it work. We're figuring out ways to do this. Um, the best way for us that we found is having one person or at least two people in the office at all times handling, you know, like last time we had Lara was our one person who was always in the office, which was great for us when we're working telework because now we always have a like a tether to the office. So if we need something that we weren't able to bring home with us, she could always get it and email it to us, wherever the case. So we're going to be doing something along those lines. Uh, we're thinking about uh, potentially going to four tens to have it set up so we have someone working of uh, you know four tens that we have it staggered so at least we have a four day block in between. That's really the goal here is that if any one of us becomes positive, what we don't want is to have the whole office all of a sudden end up in a quarantine situation and cripple us. You know we want to have it set up so if any one of us gets positive, it's okay because we have a certain amount of people who weren't even in the office, so we have that the operations keep going without skipping a beat. Um, so we haven't really figured out exactly how we're gonna be doing this just yet. But the point of this agenda item was really just to let you guys know that we're having that discussion right now and we're probably gonna be implementing something in the next week or two. So uh, whatever we do end up implementing, we'll make sure to have you keep you guys up to speed on it and to let you guys know exactly how we're uh, planning on handling this. Any, any questions on that? <clears throat> Sounds good. I think you're being proactive in uh, uh, trying to stay one step ahead. And uh, if you can juggle people's schedules, is, uh, you know, at least with this, uh, the zoning office, you've got people coming and going on doing inspections and yep. on site. So that, that helps. And uh, as we get towards uh, Winter months, maybe there'll be some big holiday vacations taken, and, and uh, yeah, if you can uh, make this work with enough remote working, I think that that's, that that would be very helpful. Right. And because uh, it's a the agenda staying pretty full. Oh yeah. I had. It, oh yeah. It is the hoppers. Oh yeah. It doesn't look like there's any but nothing. But yeah. Okay. Well, then we yeah. got to plan on being able yeah. to keep going full speed. So. Yeah. It's nice that we've already done this before. So we've already proven that we can do this. You know, we've already shown that it's possible. So, you know, I, I, from that standpoint, I feel very confident. It's just a matter of, it's a little bit different situation now because we don't have that lockdown and there's probably not going to be a lockdown. So we're going to still have that foot traffic at the counter, sure. which is fine. We just got to figure that out 
with us as to how we're going to mitigate all that. So, but I, I think we can make this work. You're, you're, I think you're, you're on the right track with the pushing the tables up to the counter and that more social distance, yet still being able to see face to face well, yeah. with a mask on. Yeah. There's nothing better than eyeball contact. I don't yes. know what you do, because now you know what's coming out of their mind. Right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, people you can almost read people when they start lying to you or well, BS and you. That's so. what they said about the Zoom. It, it, I don't like it at all. I'll just say it that. But the point is, sixty percent of all interaction comes other than your words. Exactly. Yeah. Sure. Right. Sure. My my opinion is uh you know. If this is going to go on for a long time. Oh, let's go so I think you're here. doing the right thing. You have to adjust to what is out there. So we have to adjust to society now. And it, there is no normal thing anymore. So you're gonna have to adjust and I, I agree you guys are doing a good job. So uh, just keep doing it and uh, play by ear and just keep adjusting because it, it, it's not going away. Right, right, yeah. And, and once you get behind in the work world, then, then work is not so much fun anymore. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, what it does is it. Last thing we want to do is back up our contractors because their contractors are already running, you know, running crazy. You know, we don't want to be the limiting factor. Right. You know, so that's the we key don't for need us. Anybody give anybody ammunition to point their fingers. Right. Across. Right. Right. Yep. Good. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, building inspection. Um, so. It's coming along really well in terms of process, uh, working with uh, our building inspector. I, I was just going to ask, like John Madsen now, has that been working for him? Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that he uh, he uh, has an issue with, he, it'd be nice if we could move the town of Madsen a little bit closer. <laughs> Not another one. Yeah, that would have yeah. been, nice, been nice for me to spot. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so Terry seconds that motion. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, roll, roll, call, roll. We got all sorts of local whole township. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. It's not that big a deal. I think it's reasonable. No, we don't want to give everybody. Well, yeah, we'll just move the whole thing. But, but in, in all seriousness, though, it's actually working out really well. Um, and so what we're here. So right now we have the town of um, uh, Scandinavia, uh, town of Iola, the town of Lind, and the town of Matson. And uh, the town of Scandinavia right now is under contract to the end of the year, and they're going to be coming under us at the beginning of the year. Um, and that's actually what we've been hearing from a lot of towns, uh, that they already have an existing contract, but as soon as that contract is done at the end of the year, they'll be com coming under our building inspection service. So um, from what I'm hearing, the word on the street is that it's coming along really well in terms of the service being provided. It's what they were, we were told it was going to be is what's actually happening. So that's, that's very good news. It's being well received uh, from that standpoint. But we do have an interesting issue that we want to bring up to you guys. Um, cities and villages are also looking at coming under bill, our building inspection. And so in and of itself, that's no problem. The only issue though that adds a little uh, wrinkle to this is that the building inspectors in those cities and villages also handle their zoning administrator duties. So now they're saying, okay, if we come under you guys for a building inspection, could you also do our zoning administration as well? To which that's a whole different animal. Yeah. You know, um, so we reached out to general engineering to see whether or not that'd be something that they might be able to do as a separate agreement outside of, you know, we have a contract to do a building inspection. That's it. In terms of zoning administration, if they want to handle that on a side contract as the, their company, that's, that's outside of us. But inevitably, the question is going to come as to whether or not our office wants to take care of the zoning administration in these cities and villages. Do, do these cities and villages know the, the differences between the, the codes for where they are now to where they, if there would be a change, or is that just going to be a big headache for you to have the city yes. book in the rural book? Yes, books? it's going to be a very big headache. It's entirely different because the authorization, the statutory authorizations between city, village, county, entirely different. Yeah. Jurisdictions so, are different. But you're also going to be the city council. 
from somebody else. I don't think we're, I, I, I don't think that's needed. Well, you'd have to have more people on the cost and everything else. We'd be here yeah. every day having hearings. Well, you wouldn't be hearing any of the city stuff. Because mm -hmm. we'd be going to the city right. for those meetings. Our separate councils would be hearing the different meetings and stuff. But well, we'd be going to the city. Well, if we had a staff member that was assigned to that. Yeah. That staff member would be going to those meetings at the city or village. It would be separate altogether. So we would still hold our stuff in the unincorporated meeting. But that's right. the, hearings, the right. hearings wouldn't necessarily come before. No, 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 no. Oh. No. No, they all have home rule. So what yeah, would happen? Yeah. So what it would be is essentially we would have a support staff that would be assisting those cities and be attending those city meetings and plan commission meetings, you know. I think, I mean, and, and for the, the amount of revenue received, I don't think it's going to outweigh the, because the, the problem is that nobody in our office right now is in the position to start taking on city zoning. It's an entirely different, it's a different animal than what we're dealing with right now. They have, there's different, specifically speaking, uh, urban situations have an entirely different way of looking at things than county. And so it'd be a whole learning curve. And they have some freedom to, New London is not the same as Wilpack, well, it's the same. As exactly, Wilpack. exactly. Everyone's got their, their little, right. so they're talking about changing some zoning in Wilpack well, now too with this, so they can. Yep. I don't know if it's gonna be good or not, because I don't want it to end up like Oshkosh with, with the neighborhood bar on every block. <laughs> but, uh, right. Don't, don't, uh, most cities have it, don't they have a zoning administrator? They they do, but a lot of them, especially the small ones. Well, I, we're I guess we should be really talking about like the villages, like the village of Iola, the village of uh, Scandinavia, Ogdensburg. We, we don't have a zoning administrator, do we? Who in the village board have this? You know, you want to change some zoning, you come up to us, and we can change it. And that's formally we don't have any anybody who does zoning. Okay, because I guess what we've been hearing is that Bob Visti has been the one handling it for the village of Iola. All right, well, maybe, that, maybe he does. But yeah, it's, it's kind of funny because I think we asked Bob about it because he's supposed to be going to Scandinavia too, and it was a surprise yep. to him that he was. Yeah, so right, right. So I think in the, on the, he may be the person who is kind of like mentioned as being the ZA, but I don't know that he, well, like Jason yeah. said, I don't know that he even knows that he's I supposed to be doing I'll, it. I'll find out. But, uh, on the zoning, you can go out on a building inspection and tell you whether it's zoned properly or not. And that's it. Sure. If it's not zoned properly, then it, it, you know, it shuts it down or whatever. You have to do. Sure. But he doesn't do any. We don't ask him, you know, what can we zone that down to the vacant lot over there. So, what you're saying is you're, you're really talking about the small villages. You're going to talk about the New London, Clintonville, and well, back. I don't I, know if we're talking about any specific yeah. one right now, but I think the, it's, the question's been floated both small and large. Yeah, small and large has been floated. But I mean, again, all these questions have been asked. Yeah. That's just, that seems like a nightmare waiting to happen. Yeah, to, to me, the only way I can see this working for everybody involved, um, is when we have time, say the 2024, like when we go through the courthouse expansion and we're gonna be retooling our office, that we're actually gonna have room for an additional person. If we have an additional person that is our city village person and it's being funded by the cities and villages, you know, cause that's really what this comes down to is the cities and villages, it doesn't make a ton of sense for them budgetarily speaking to have a full time dedicated person but yet if they could all pitch in and have the one person you know and take over and have it be enough cities and villages where it actually makes sense and it becomes somewhat budget neutral at least from the county's perspective i mean i think it'd be a good service to provide to help all these cities and villages because they're dealing with budgetary issues like anybody else it's just that as it stands right now i don't see our office being able to we have our own issues that we're trying to deal with as a, with our current staffing situation. And to take on the additional cities and villages, I, that's just, it's a lot. Maybe the answer is that for the time being to those inquiries is at this time, we wanna get uh, a 
good handle on the building permit project and see how that grows. And being that the zoning uh, for the municipalities follows a different rule book, uh, we want to just kind of pick it. Just, we won't say outright no, but we'll kick it down the road a ways uh, so that if things change down the road, that we still have an open door, but not promising anything right now. So just please stay where you're at for the time being because we, we want to get our heads around this this step first and we're expecting more business in this. I would think too that the, yeah. the building inspector should be a separate entity from zoning, uh, not to combine the two, that they should be two different situations. Yeah, and then yeah, agreed. And that, that's where the issue is. Because you have conflict, you have conflict interest. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Sounds good. We'll we'll uh, we'll pass that on to them, to these cities and villages. But again, right now as it stands, it's working out well. Our process with Rodney, we got it figured out in terms of how we get the information out to them, and I feel it's it's working out, working out just fine. Yep. So far, so good. Yeah, we, be, we couldn't be happier. Yeah, so it would be different if, if we operated under the same guidelines. Yeah. We well, you don't. Know, we don't. That's why it's got to be totally separate. Yeah. County zoning. Building inspection, and then you have another city, city as you have a right program completely separate. Yep. I guess going back, if it if it is working good for the townships under there right now, I would just encourage these other townships to send a letter to. I get I don't care if they model lovers or whatever, but boy, I think that means a lot. You know, we put on the outside of the envelope urgent. Sure. We did everything we could so people opened them. I mean, it just takes away the after the fact fees and bad mouthing and everything else. Right. 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 We'll send that message in. You bet. You bet. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Uh, one other item under building inspection is their fee schedule. We're making an adjustment to the fee schedule. Uh, this was an unintended consequence that we can't, we ran uh, ran up on. Um, uh, accessory structures. So in our accessory structures, we have anything less than the uh, less than 200 square feet doesn't require a building permit. Well, what we found is that there's also going to be accessory structures that are just going to be over 200 square feet, but still don't really require any any level of inspection. There's a lot of kits that you can buy where there's really nothing to them. There's nothing to for Rodney to take a look at. And so what he's suggesting on the fee schedule is to add in what he's referring to as portable accessory structures. Uh, and then, so then basically portable structures, anything that's still greater than 200 square feet would be $55 plus any mechanical cost. If there's any other additional mechanical costs associated with that, that he would have an inspection for. The idea being, that like he just had, we had one not uh, long ago that he went out there and it was just one of those kits. There's no electric, there's no HVAC, there's nothing, there's nothing for him to take a look at besides, yep, th there it is, you know? So it didn't make sense to us to require 17 cents per square foot, you know, with, with a minimum fee of $165 for an accessory structure that really doesn't require any permits or any inspections. So he were just adding that on there as like a, as a flat $55 as a way to be cheap and reasonable for those types of accessory structures. Does that make, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. 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 It's, it's fair. And it, there's bound to be a few things like this that we're, we're just in trouble. We're learning. Yep. I mean, yeah. It's a toolkit a little bit. That's here. right. Yep. We've already bought a few things in the ordinance that we'll have to uh, revisit with next year. Yep. Yep. So that's how it's going to work for the time being. How do you deal with that? Can you just make an adjustment in your fee schedule? That's right. Yep. Because the fee schedule is based off of you guys are the ones that approve the fee schedule. Mm -hmm. So as long as you guys approve the amendment to this fee schedule, it's considered to be the new fee schedule. We need a motion on that? We would need a motion. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Who made the second? Eric, thank you. Moved by Supervisor Quisman, seconded by Supervisor Murphy to approve the fee schedule adjustment for the, uh, I want to describe those, those accessory structures. Yep. 
accessory structures greater than 200 square feet that don't require uh, building inspections. We got roll call or, or voice? Roll call. Coastman? Yes. Mutt? Yes. Fairwitz? Yes. Murphy? Yes. Nygaard? Yes. Motion carries. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is that it for any other questions, comments on building inspection before we move on? Okay. Uh, the 2021 building and zoning schedule, uh, of I'm sorry, uh, building and zoning, uh, planning and zoning uh, schedule. You guys got a copy of the uh, schedule yeah. that got passed out? Yeah. So this is what we're looking at. Um, setting this up for, so we have a, a definite date then for every every month. Now, the one thing that we learned is that this is when IT meets also, this these same, uh, these same Tuesdays. Um, so as long as we start after they're done, we should be okay. Um, so essentially, as long as we have our hearing starting at 10 o'clock to 10.30, I'm sure we, we should be okay as long, but we wouldn't be able to have our hearing start at nine, which is with our on-sites, I don't think that'd be happening so maybe at some point we'll be able to get back to doing on sites as a group too yep so if we just leave our it's a little bit of a late start and it runs you know, like birds almost two hours in again today but uh, meeting time isn't going to change uh length right. of meeting isn't going to change right. it's just yeah i i like this group myself sure i like the layout and and uh Downstairs is such a big room that uh, it just gets very spread out. Everything is okay with the schedule otherwise? Okay. So no, just we got probably fill in a uh, Tuesday or two. Or oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yep. I just see one month, once a month. So we're going to have once a month for sure. Yeah. yeah. There'll be a couple of wild cards in there. Well, that, excuse me if I'm early, but this way, from the standpoint of publishing, they know exactly where they're at. They exactly. And then when we're talking to people, we're talking to landowners or people, developers, that we can tell them when our next committee meeting is going to be. You bet. Okay, so it's like the first Tuesday every month, the way it's looking there about, huh? Yeah. Yep. No, that first one. Oh, we moved it from the, I think we the second. Uh, the second yeah, it was uh, law enforcement. Law enforcement. That's what we want. Oh. Yep. oh, that's right. Yep. 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 I brought that up. I remember you. They did it for me. Oh, my important. Yep. We changed from Thursday to Tuesday for me. Yeah. Ah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Great. That was a first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I tell you what. I am. Um, ah, good to be in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Only if I can convince my wife. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, upcoming meetings. We have October 20th, right? And then November 17th. And potentially December 1st or so. December 1st? Christmas is yeah. Okay, October 20th, you said. Yep. November 17th. And December 1st. For December, you, uh, I know it's quite a ways out, but you want to try and uh, load that meeting up so the workload's a little lighter later in the month if people are taking. I, I don't know right. what, what day of the week the holidays are falling this year. Good question. Christmas uh, is on a Friday. We Friday. typically try to steer. So it'll be shorter weeks. Yeah. We usually try to steer away from those couple of weeks there. Yeah. Um, even if stuff is piled up. But we'll yeah. try our best to get everything through. Yeah. The first of right. Below, below, below. So that we can uh, avoid having a meeting right before Christmas. Yeah. Right. You bet. Okay. Well, motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Another good meeting in spite of me. <laughs> no, no.